Hello, my name's Anthony Talmage and I'm here to help you realise your full potential as a psychic. Together in these weekly 15-minute podcasts, we're going on a journey through territory containing the mystical and the paranormal. By the time we reach our destination, we'll have encountered angels, spirit guides, elementals, ghosts, poltergeists and entities that dwell in other dimensions. We will have looked at precognition, retrocognition, trance states, possession, past lives and reincarnation. We'll learn how to communicate with animals and plants, how to move energy from one place to another and how to go back and forward in time. As we travel, you'll learn what psychic skills are available to you and which are the ones that will make you a unique psychic. And what makes our travelling different from any other method you'll find anywhere is the vehicle we'll be using. Our mode of travel will be one used by the ancients, but only known today by a few, and you're soon going to be one of those few. It's called dowsing. Dowsing's like that theoretical wormhole in space that connects faraway places. It enables you to jump straight there without the tedious business of travelling thousands of light years and waiting several lifetimes. Dowsing's a bridge to the information field out there, which contains everything you'll ever need to become a powerful psychic. The fact that you're listening to this means that you're on the edge of that wormhole in space, but to get to the other side, there are certain steps you'll have to take, and I'm here to help you take them, and to make sure you arrive safely. In case you're wondering who I am and why you should believe anything I say about psychic matters, here's a bit about me. For over 30 years I've been researching the metaphysical, esoteric, mystical, occult, paranormal, the mysterious and things that go bump in the night. And I've come to the conclusion that the unconscious mind is the one factor common to them all. Which means that everyone has access to psychic powers. And this is now my mission, to encourage everyone to use their sixth sense to fulfil their potential. I've written hundreds of articles on the subject and three books, and they're all available on Amazon and most other online book retailers. And if you want to check them out, put Anthony Talmage, Anthony with an H, in the book search field, and you'll find them there. Back to our journey into the psychic world. Before we get down to practicalities, let me give you an example of the magical powers that Dowsing has. In 1991, when her daughter's rare hand-carved harp was stolen, Associate Professor Elizabeth Lloyd Mayer, at that time clinical supervisor at the University of California, did something extraordinary for a dyed-in-the-wool scientific thinker. After the police failed to turn up any leads, a friend suggested she call in a dowser, one who specialised in finding lost objects. Well, with nothing to lose and almost as a joke, Dr Mayer agreed. Within two days, and without leaving his Arkansas home 1,500 miles away, her chosen dowser had located the exact California Street coordinates where the harp was eventually found. What followed turned Dr. Mayer's familiar world of science and rational thinking upside down. Deeply shaken, yet driven to understand what had happened, Mayer began a 14-year journey of discovery which ended in her writing her bestseller, Extraordinary Knowing, which explores what science has to say about this episode and countless other so-called inexplicable phenomena from Sigmund Freud's writings on telepathy, to secret CIA experiments on remote viewing, from leading-edge neuroscience to the strange world of quantum physics, Dr. Mayer researched a wealth of credible and fascinating information about the psychic world, where the mind seems to trump the laws of nature. These podcast episodes will now go one step further, They'll make you part of this world 
and this world will become part of you. By the time we've finished our journey, you'll be using your dowsing skills as a kind of spiritual search engine, an extra-dimensional Google, searching all that is known for answers to anything and everything. And that is our key to psychic power. Never has the ancient and subtle art of dowsing been more appropriate than for our 21st century times. As I take you on a tour of dowsing, bear in mind that everything you hear is going to have a relevance to the ultimate purpose of these podcasts, to help you become a powerful psychic, able to achieve your psychic ambitions and fulfil the true destiny that is meant for your life. But to get to this destination, you need fully to understand what dowsing's all about, its background, history and the practicalities of learning how to douse. In other words, to become a good psychic, you need first to be a good dowser. So I ask you to be a little patient as we traverse some challenging terrain. But stick with it and I'll guide you step by step from the early days when you amaze yourself that dowsing works for you, all the way to using your psychic powers to make a big difference to your life and to the world around you. And you won't need to accomplish an all-round expertise in dowsing before moving on to psychic matters. The two will develop together as we walk the road together. As you learn about dowsing, we'll apply it to the psychic realm. Each step you take in dowsing will be a step towards achieving your psychic potential. So, let's start with the absolute basics. What is dowsing? Dowsing is a way of gaining information not available to our five senses. It's a bridge between our intuition and the information field out there usually accessed by geniuses, savants, mystics and psychics. Dowsing empowers us to access and help the world beyond the limitations of our rational mind. You'll be asking, do I have to have a special skill to be a dowser? My answer, no. Pretty well everyone can douse. Is it easy to learn? Yes, but... While most people can quickly get a yes or a no response to their questions, many fail to get the correct yes or no. To get it right more often than by random chance takes persistence and practice. Many potentially good dowsers give up because they get discouraged by early mistakes and haven't the determination to learn from those mistakes and keep practicing. How does it work? No one really knows, and this is what makes it exciting. The best brains in the world can't explain it, but thousands of examples of successful dowsing proves that dowsing is real. What are the dowsing tools? The primary instrument is the mind of the dowser. To engage the subconscious in the dowsing process, the dowser uses any of four main tools. They are... The pendulum, the Y-rod, otherwise known as the forked stick, the L-rod, or something called the bobber. These act as indicators, much as a needle on a gauge. The tools respond giving yes, no, or true, false answers to carefully worded questions. Dowsing is sometimes called Divining, which indicates that the source of the answers might be from a higher consciousness or the universal mind. Key to it all, though, is your intent. We'll talk more about this later, but for now, all you need to know is that the human being's mind can change the world. The human consciousness is what connects with the universal mind. And what has all this got to do with real life, you ask? Your mind's accessing the universal consciousness is like your computer exploring the internet. All the answers are there if you know where to look. And how do you know where to look? The practice of dowsing is the key. 
The more the digital age dominates our lives, the less we're feeling connected to the world of nature around us. The dowsing tool gives us back that connectedness in both a practical and spiritual way. On the one hand, dowsing can be used for locating minerals, water, archaeological remains or lost objects. On the other, it can detect unseen energies, both natural and man-made. The psychic dowser can take this further and connect with angels, spirits, entities, previous lives, the past and, in some circumstances, the future. There are four main areas that dowsing is used in today. Two are what you might call tangible areas and two are more intangible. The tangible ones are finding water and minerals or archaeological remains. And the intangible areas are human, animal and plant health and earth energies, now also known as subtle energies, and we'll look at these later. First, though, despite the fact that dowsing is an incredible skill available to 99% of the human population, most people only have a dim awareness of what it is. The most common conception is of an elderly gent in a tweed jacket, plodding across a field, waving about a forked stick while seeking underground water. This common notion isn't wrong, and there are many water dowsers who are engaged even in this day and age to look for underground streams. In fact, despite the advanced technologies of the 21st century, the dowsing skill is in more and more demand as water globally becomes scarcer. I believe a shortage of water to satisfy the needs of a growing world population is a crisis that will dominate this century. Wars will not be fought over oil anymore, but over water. This is because in March 2020, the global population reached 7,800,000,000 people. It took over 2 million years of human prehistory and history for the world's population to reach 1 billion, and it took only 200 years more to reach almost 8 billion. As the human race grows, it competes more and more fiercely for this precious resource, because whatever waters on the planet today is the same as was here a million years ago. In other words, as more and more people are born, there is less and less water to go round. And to make the statistics worse, of all the water on the planet Earth today, only about 2% of it is fresh. And of this, just 1.6% is locked up in the polar ice caps and the glaciers. So you may want to forget about developing your psychic powers and just learn to be a good water dowser because you're going to be in increasing demand as current supplies dry up. In fact, there is a serious shortage of good water dowsers. As I said earlier, water and mineral dowsing is one of the four main disciplines of dowsing today and is clearly a tangible skill. If a minerals dowser says there's oil to be found under a certain terrain in the US, Norway or Saudi Arabia, he or she is either going to be right or wrong. The fact that good dowsers are right more often than they are wrong proves that dowsing works. Legendary dowser George Applegate, who died in 2015, aged 93, celebrated his 80th birthday by locating successfully his 2,000th borehole. And he said, and this is a good tip for us dowsers, mistakes are important and helpful as long as we learn from them. You don't learn from success, which goes to your head. One of George's greatest challenges was dowsing for water in Perth, Western Australia after a four-year drought. There was no grass, the livestock were dying, and the situation had become dire. George found his spot and advised his client that he'd have to drill down 6,000 feet, a highly expensive operation. In the event, they took the chance and found an underground lake, which was 30,000 years old. 
How could one man with only a forked stick find something that had eluded even the most skilled geologists in the world? A sixth sense, intuition honed with practice, is the answer. We all have the same intuitive abilities as George, and it's these same intuitive abilities that will connect us to the psychic realm. The second divining discipline that can be described as tangible is archaeological dowsing. When the archaeological dowser says there are remains of an Iron Age fort or a Roman villa six feet under the surface of the soil, he or she will quickly be proved right or wrong. For decades, traditional archaeologists who qualified after years of study were irritated by these amateur Johnny-come-latelys who would pluck, seemingly out of the air, information about what lay under the ground. But after many examples of dowsers successfully identifying in minutes what conventional archaeology might take weeks to uncover, there's now a grudging acceptance in the profession that these amateurs have something valuable to offer. For instance, dowsing can allow a wide and thorough site survey to be conducted, either on the ground or from a map, with great efficiency in both time and resources. The concealed presence of the structures, of artefacts and of all banner of residue from previous habitations, or how the site was used by its community, can be ascertained by dowsing allowing analysis to be performed in a non-intrusive manner without the necessity of disturbing, damaging or otherwise interfering with a location. That's not to say that this has made redundant the legitimate scientific techniques like ground-penetrating radar. The two approaches can work hand in hand. In his book, Dowsing, One Man's Way, J.S. Scott Elliott lists 18 case studies in the UK where dowsing was solely responsible for the discovery of an archaeological site or new information which was subsequently verified. But surely the archaeo dowser is using what most people would call psychic powers. How else can you explain how he or she walks across a site with a pair of L rods or a pendulum and says, this was a Roman fort dating back to 60 AD, and waving at a patch of bare earth, he'll say, there are the walls there, and there was a window here, and a door over there. The path from the main door led to a lake over there. In this instance, the dowsers going back in time. Yes, time travel happens, and more of this later. The two areas of dowsing that you might call intangible and the ones that will have the most relevance for us as psychics are health dowsing and earth or subtle energies. And this is where it starts to get really interesting for those of us who want to learn about and master other dimensions. Coming up in episode two, we look at health and healing, starting with detecting food allergies and food intolerances, we examine the importance of our invisible energy bodies and we're introduced to the psychic world. Meanwhile, if you want something to hand to reinforce what you've been learning in this podcast, you might find my book, Dows Your Way to Psychic Power, or any in my Psychic Mind series, helpful. Check out Anthony Talmage on Amazon or any online retailer. See you at episode two.